I will say this about investing. Everything you do learn is cumulative. What I learned at 20 is useful. Welcome to another episode of Equity Mates, a podcast that follows our journey of investing. Whether you're an absolute beginner or approaching Warren Buffett status, our aim is to help break down your barriers from beginning to dividend. My name is Bryce, and as always, I'm joined by my equity buddy, Ren. How's it going? I'm very good, Bryce. Very excited for this episode. Stake have challenged us to talk about the future of Australia. We are known as the... Uh, crystal ball gazers um the oracles of darlinghurst there we go uh no but look um investing is all about looking into the future with stake you can stake your claim to the future and invest on wall street and the asx um and we get the opportunity to uh look at what the some industries that might drive Australia's future economy might look like. That's it, Ren. So head to hellostake.com to find out more about $3 ASX brokerage and everything else that they offer. Uh, but you're right, Ren. In this episode, we're going to be exploring what the future of Australia's mining industry looks like. And I'm hearing people cheering in the background because we're finally going to talk about mining. <laughs> <laughs> and- Is it an Australian <laughs> investing podcast if they haven't spoken about mining? Yeah, exactly. And uh, we're going to have a look at some of the companies that are leading the charge and uh, really putting their foot forward to lead the future of Australia. So a massive thanks to Stake for um, challenging us to do this. It's been a really enjoyable process getting this together. Yeah. So plenty of um, plenty of mining chat to come. Plenty of mining <laughs> chat to come. And look, mining, definitely not something that we've invested in a lot. No. Um, and I, I really enjoyed this episode because... There's a lot of hype about lithium. Lithium this, lithium that, <laughs> lithium to the moon. Um, Elon needs more lithium. Well, yeah. um, and Australia is blessed with massive lithium reserves. And we will talk about lithium, don't worry. But there's a heap of other minerals that we're also going to talk about that you maybe haven't heard a lot about. Like Snap Quiz, Bryce, what is potash used for? Potash? Yeah. Is it's used- one word. Oh, potash. <laughs> potash is used for, um, let me guess, not sure, farming of some sort. Yeah. It's used for... Did you Google it? No. <laughs> it's used for um, putting on the ground and fertilizing things. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we did an episode with potash in it. Well, there you At go. At some point, but That's yeah. the kind of deep and insightful analysis <laughs> you can expect as we unpack Australia's future. No, but look, um, the the job of an investor is to look into the future and forecast what companies will do well, what industries do well, what markets will do well. And last week, we got to talk about the future of Australian farming, and there's so much exciting stuff happening there with mm. technology. Um, the interesting thing with this episode is that any technology you think about, um, a lot of these minerals are required to to drive that future. So um, Australia is going to be critical to a lot of what is to come, clean energy revolution, technological revolutions. Um, so let's get into it because otherwise we just keep waxing lyrical about how good Australia is. Um where do we want to start? Well, let's start at the top, Ren. Land, uh, we've been we've been obviously incredibly blessed, as Dude, you. Dude, I said we're going to stop <laughs> waxing lyrical about how good Australia is. Well, then let's start with the the question around coal, oil, and natural gas. We've been riding the back of those for fifty years now. So, um, are they on their way out? Is this the end of the Australian mining boom? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Long and the short of it is mining. Uh, is going to be a part of Australia's future. It may even be a bigger part of Australia's future economy, but what we mine will change. Yeah. And I think uh, I'm going to make put a smile on ScoMo's face and disappoint some people listening when I say that we're not going to stop mining coal. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to stop drilling for oil, uh, but it is likely uh, that it will be a lot less. Yeah. Yeah. With a focused turn to 
other minerals, I guess, that mm. we've, uh, we're going to chat about in a bit more detail and go through some of the companies that are mining and, and involved in exploration. But lithium, you've mentioned, Ren, but cobalt and then rare earth minerals, which I'm excited to chat about. We have some of the largest reserves of these resources. And um, you've also mentioned already, Ren, that they're critical to the world's future. Think battery power, electricity, think transport infrastructure, these minerals mm. are key to that. So, Bryce, to answer your question, does this mean the end of Australia's mining industry? No. There are three guarantees in life. Death, taxes, and a healthy supply of <laughs> ASX-listed mining explorers. Love it. Love it. <laughs> so, let's talk about the industry today before we talk about what the future might look like. Um, not surprising to start here. It is a critical industry to Australia's economy. Yeah. Um, it is huge. So... A few different sources had a few different numbers, but so take these numbers as ballparks. But uh, in 2019 to 2020, Australia's mining industry was worth $202 billion, 10% of Australia's economy. Wow. Not small. That's significant, yeah. Uh, but then uh, in another source, uh, this is obviously a year later, so 2020 to 2021, uh, after exceeding $300 billion for the first time, um, and then the forecasts were that Australian mining industry was going to grow to three hundred seventy nine billion this year. So seriously, seriously. either it, it grew at fifty percent in one year, in one COVID affected year, from two hundred two well, to three hundred. Didn't we go through a price? Didn't the price go crazy? True. Yeah, iron ore went. Yeah, nuts. It went nuts. coal went nuts coal as well. Went, actually, yeah, yeah, coal went nuts. Yeah, yeah so maybe it was. Yeah, you, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Um, Good on mining, I guess. <laughs> yeah, good, <laughs> good on mining. <laughs> good on China's demand, continued demand for resources. Um, in terms of how many people the industry employs, 240,000 people was the number that we could find. And then one point, so directly employed, as in like four mining companies in mining, mining services, and then 1.1 million direct and indirect. So the indirect captures, you know, all the employment that's created around mines mm, in mining mm, towns and mm. stuff like that. Given that Australia has a population of what, 25 million? Are we talking 26 yeah, maybe 26, now? Yeah. 1.1 million direct and indirect jobs is huge. A lot. So yeah. let's start there. Politically, whatever you think of Australia's mining industry, um, it's massive. Yeah. Biggest industry? Uh, potentially, I think. Or cons- I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to start throwing industries out there, but it. It would be up there, if not the biggest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ren, let's have a chat about the subsections. We've broken them up into uh, in part of this uh, industry that's going out of favour, an industry that is unlikely to change, yeah. and then parts of the industry that have a bit of tailwinds behind them. Yeah, and let's move quickly through the going out of favour because that's the political yeah, ground. Yeah, yeah. No one is going to get angry at us and send us angry emails if we talk about lithium sure. for 20 well, minutes. Well, watch this. How quick's <laughs> this? Going out of favour, coal, oil, natural gas. Not bad. Can we go any faster? Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, we know coal's going out of favour. The UN is pushing for global phase-out by 2030. Over 40 countries have pledged to phase-out coal at um, COP26 in Glasgow. Um, Australia does obviously still see it as part of our economy going forward, but um, it's quite Qu- political. Yeah, yeah. So the current government sees it as a bigger part of our economy. Um, the This is completely unrelated, and this is political ground that we'll get emails <laughs> about. But I just didn't know this. Did you know Adani changed their name? No, I didn't. Adani changed their name to Brothers? Is this, um, is this just to kind of... Like make people forget about Adani. Maybe it, uh, Bravus is also Latin for brave. Oh. So read into that what you will. But yeah, their mine got Carmichael mine got approved. Construction has begun. Uh, the life of that mine will be a while. So coal isn't going anywhere. Um, but I think the important thing to note is that even beyond that, regardless of your political stripes, coal will likely have a place going forward just likely a smaller place um thermal coal is what we use to create energy but coking coal is used to uh do things like uh power steel furnaces to turn iron ore into steel no one is saying that steel is on the way out so um we did an industry deep dive on oil earlier this year and we spoke about a number of different projections about what the future of 
the oil industry was. The US thinks that we'll be producing more oil in 2050, but most people think we're probably going to halve our oil output between now and 2050. Yeah. It's probably a similar story for coal. It's going to be less, but it's not going to be zero. It's not going to be zero. So I think coal, oil, natural gas, we're not saying that they're not going to play a role in Australia's mining and resources industry going forward. We're saying it will probably be a smaller part of the pie. Yeah. And given that coal today in Australia is a $50 billion a year industry, um, that's a big gap to fill. Yeah. If it goes from 50 to 25, say, and I'm just pulling numbers out of my ass, but 50 to 25, that's $25 billion worth of GDP and tax revenue and uh, jobs and everything else that needs to be filled. Well, hopefully it'll be filled by some of uh, the or parts of the industry that have those tailwinds. But before we jump to that, uh, a subsection that is unlikely to change, we've got gold, iron ore, copper, lead, diamonds, zinc, you name it. Uh, Hold on, you skipped one. Uh, yeah, rutile. No idea what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so gold, uh, Australia is in the top three global producers of gold. It's our third major commodity export. Gold's used in a number of manufacturing processes around the world, so it, it doesn't feel like it's going to be going anywhere. Obviously, iron ore, steel production, it's our, our top export. It's here to stay. Um, and then everyone's looking for diamonds, so that's not going anywhere either. <laughs> so, rut, uh, rutile is used to produce uh, light, strong, corros- corrosion-resistant titanium metal for use in aircraft, spaceship, motor vehicles, and desalination plants. There you go. Pretty important. Pretty important. I'd yeah. say even potentially should be in the next section. Growth. Yeah, growth. Well, well I think... Let's just be clear that, like, we're saying that it's unlikely to change, um, you know, gold. If the gold price goes up because... Um, inflation is rampant and <laughs> and, Bi- and bitcoin isn't a good hedge against inflation then uh obviously we're going to keep exploring and trying to find more gold deposits and mining those gold deposits iron ore like the world is going to keep building things as the world gets more uh like urban uh and we need to build more cities and we build more skyscrapers and more transport infrastructure etc cetera, etc cetera. demand for iron ore is probably only going to go in one direction Same as copper, same as diamonds, you know, like a a lot of these minerals that we mine and we have established industries for, they'll probably grow still. Yeah. We're not saying they're not going to grow. But but the tailwind that we're about to talk about is is next level. Well, let's talk about that, Ren, because now we move to the part of this episode where we really do discuss the future of mining in Australia. That's right. And Stake have asked us to talk about what the future is and, you know, they're all about allowing Australians, well, allowing people all around the world to stake their claim to that future. And this is where it gets really exciting for a country that is blessed with minerals (laughs) because the future is (laughs) mineral. The future future is mining? I don't know. The future is minerals. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But... Let's start with what the predictions are broadly. Well, the World Bank report Minerals for Climate Action has found that production of minerals such as graphite, lithium and cobalt could increase by nearly 500% by 2050 to meet the growing demand for clean energy technologies. And the IMF suggests that Australia is in a pole position to benefit from a six-fold increase in demand for so-called critical minerals to hit our targets of net zero. So last week we spoke about pole position for the agricultural opportunities that we have. Now we've got pole position for the mineral opportunities. It's almost as if we chose these topics (laughs) deliberately. Ah, It's all falling (laughs) into place. There's a reason we didn't do software as a service in Australia's future. (laughs) (laughs) So we're like, so we're in a, we're in the box seat here to take, um, to take advantage of the demand that's going to come for, from for all of these minerals for uh, climate action. Uh, additionally, there's a report from the Department of Industry, Science, Energy and Resources that indicates there are over 250, 250 mining projects under development in Australia at the moment. And I think we can safely say that of those 250, not a lot of them are new coal mines. No. Well, I hope we can safely say, but a lot of them are these minerals, these minerals critical to our journey to net zero and also um, uh, sort of new te- required for new technology. So 
Let's talk about some of them. Let's get specific. Yep. Um, the IMF identified four critical minerals uh, that are required to reach net zero. Nickel, copper, lithium, and cobalt. Uh, they, the IMF expect cobalt production needs to double by 2050. Nickel production needs to increase fourfold by 2050. And lithium and cobalt need to produce need to lift sixfold by 2050 if the world is to reach net zero. Now, Bryce, you know something about those minerals? They're all mined in Australia. They're all mined in Australia. <laughs> what a guess. Just as a side note here, there needs to be an ETF that captures these minerals. If there isn't one, I've done no research. That's a that. really good shout. Yeah, like a, just an ETF that's like, you want access to nickel, copper, lithium and cobalt that are critical minerals for net zero, here it is. I mean, some of the big mining companies would probably say like, if you want access to a diversified range of just buy minerals, <laughs> just buy us. Yeah. And we'll get to the big players and what they're doing in a second. But have we also checked that like BetaShares Clean Energy ETF or... As I said, I've done no, no research Cause, on that. I've cause, just come... That's just sprung to my, my mind. Look, that's why we love your mind because it has <laughs> great ideas. So look, if the ETF issuers are listening, we'll give that one to them for free. Yeah, yeah. And if the ETF issuers are listening and saying we've already done it... Apologies. We did no research. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, back to the task at hand, Ren. Um, why, are these, why are these minerals? So Bryce, yes. four key minerals that the IMF identified. Yep. Copper, nickel, lithium, and cobalt. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a little bit of a pop quiz with you. Okay, hit me. All right, let's start with copper. Uh, where do you think Australia ranks in terms of... Uh, copper reserves well i mean if we're in the box seat for uh these minerals i'm gonna have to say we're in the top three we are in the top three we're second uh second to chile uh who are number one okay so not bad not bad uh chile. let's go nickel where do you think we sit there similarly but i'm just gonna say we're pole position we are second there okay. again uh lithium what do you reckon got to be number one no we are second nah. <laughs> chile again oh, is really? ahead of us uh but we right now we are the world's largest producer. Yeah, I got my my follow up question is how how does Chile rank on the production side of all this stuff? But that's another podcast. Let's keep going. Well, it's not really. It's really just another Google search. <laughs> uh, they're second. So uh, in twenty nineteen, which is just what Google has given to me, we did forty two thousand tons. They did eighteen thousand. Okay. China third, seven thousand five hundred. Okay. I assume that metro 42,000, they don't have the unit, but I'm going to assume it's tons. Yeah, right. It's tons. Okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, now let's get back to the game. You're doing pretty well so far. Okay. We've What have we done? We've done copper. We've done nickel. We've done lithium. Yeah. Uh, last one, cobalt. Where do you reckon? Well, the theme seat feels like we're second, so I'm going to go second. We are second. And Bryce, I've got to say, if you want to hear an absolutely fascinating story mm -hmm. the number one producer of cobalt in the world is not chile okay it's the democratic republic of the congo and the story of their cobalt wealth and what it has done to that country is fascinating ruined I, it no it uh, not yet i mean like there's obviously the what do they call it dutch disease yeah, when yeah. a country is like blessed with resources and that causes problems Chaos, yeah. um but no um uh, there was a podcast, and I can't remember which one because it deserves a shout out. I think it was Today Explained. They did an episode on. Um, uh, they they sent a reporter to the DRC, and it is apparently just like there is just wealth. Like, oh wow! There's obviously a lot of issues with like how it's mined in certain places, and a lot of illegal mines and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's crazy that like demand for cobalt is so high, and the DRC I think has about. Oh, they produce about 60% of the world's cobalt at the moment. Really fascinating story. You know what I'm going to do? Rather than just waffling on and on about it, I'll find it just and put I'll put it in the it show in notes. The show notes. Hope, may, <laughs> maybe, hopefully. No, I'll do it. I'll commit okay, to it. Okay, good. Commit to it. All right. So, um, before we lead, move on to some of the major players who are leading the way with these, uh, with these four minerals, nickel, nickel, copper, lithium, and cobalt. Controversially, Ren, we haven't discussed uranium. Where does this come into the conversation, or does it? Well, it definitely does. And, like, people are divided on whether 
nuclear power is required to hit net zero. But I think more and more people realize that nuclear power is part of the energy mix required. Australia is the world's third largest producer of uranium and BHP have the world's largest deposit of uranium uh, at their Olympic Dam in South Australia. Mm. So again, another resource that we're blessed by. Wherever you, again, sit on the political spectrum of is it safe, do we need it, all of that stuff. The fact of the matter is there's a lot of nuclear energy that's produced today and we can continue to mine it and export it. And I think there's not going to be less produced in the future. Yeah. 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 Uh, But there's also some other minerals that we didn't touch on. So if uh, you're going to produce a battery, you need a lot of the minerals we touched on. You need lithium, we're the world's largest producer, second largest reserves. You need nickel, we have the world's second largest reserves. You need cobalt, which we have the second largest reserves. We've spoken about those. You also need graphite. Now, we're not strong on graphite. Australia, not that strong. But the US just put $100 million into a Australian graphite producer. So we'll talk about that briefly um, because that's an interesting story. And you also need manganese. Now, Bryce, where do you think we rank in the manganese reserves? We've No, production. I've got the production. I mean, got to be top three. We are third. Nice. So again, we're up there. We're up there. We're right up there. We're right up there with a lot of this stuff. So, And we haven't touched on rare earth, but we also have a lot of rare earth. So maybe if we have time at the end, if I don't waffle too much, we can talk about rare earth. Well, let's see how we go. Okay. So before we jump into some of the major producers that are um, leading the way, a, a thank you to Stake who are challenging us to think about the future of Australia and the industries that are staking their claim to the future. You can invest on Wall Street and the ASX with Stake. Head to hellostake.com to find out more about their $3 ASX brokerage and everything else that they offer to get you in the game. Stake your claim to the future. So, Ren, let's start with the big guys. I've just Googled Democratic Republic cobalt mining and the headlines are not good. <laughs> Don't, let's not so... get caught up on that. Let's not, <laughs> let's not get caught up on that. Uh, we can... That's why Australia needs to mine more of it. <laughs> okay, yes, to yeah. get it away from there. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, um, let's leave that and <laughs> actually have a chat. The big players, BHP, Rio, Fortescue. Traditionally, they, you know, last number of years, iron ore, coal... The, the big the big players in that space um but they're really showing us where the industry is going and are pivoting in this space yeah fortescue less interesting than the other two because they're iron ore pure play but the interesting pivot they're making is into hydrogen yeah um but i think bhp and rio are the really interesting stories here so bhp sold their coal assets to stanmore mm-hmm. sold their oil assets with that merger with woodside um and then they've acquired, uh, and then they've acquired pot- potash and nickel assets. So they're reorientating their portfolio away from what have been big value creators over the past fifty years, yeah, yeah. coal and oil, and towards some of these newer metals. They're staking their claim to the future, that's for sure. Yeah. Rio, Rio, similarly, they've sold off their coal uh, to Yang Coal Australia and have acquired a lithium miner. So similarly. To, uh, understanding where the future of Australia's mining opportunities mm. lie. And like we say the future of Australia's mining, but these two companies in particular are not constrained to Australia. No. They're biggest Global. miners in the world. Yeah. Um, yes. And so they will be reorientating their portfolio globally around some of these new opportunities. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's chat about Lithium Ren because there are a number of listed players in this space and I'm sure the Equity Mates community know a lot of these and there might even be some more that we haven't mentioned, but uh, this is a hot topic in the Equity Mates community. So let's start with a company that has uh, a deal with Tesla and that is Lion Town Resources. Their yeah. ticker is LTR. Now, bef- hold on, before, so we're going to go mineral by mineral here and we're going to talk about some of these future minerals and we're going to talk about a number of companies. It's important to note, similar to last week, that we didn't do any work on <laughs> are they good investments? What yes. value are they trading at? Yeah. What, you know, what is their individual company future, future prospects? What yeah. we want to do is give you a snapshot of the variety of Australian companies 
listed Australian companies working on this. But what we're going to do is throw so many companies <laughs> at you that it can't possibly be construed as financial advice because no one could possibly invest in all of them. So we're going to force you to do your own research by throwing so many companies at you in the next 20 minutes. <laughs> so, here, yes, good disclaimer. <laughs> so Liontown Resources, ticker is LTR. They've signed a deal with Tesla to supply up to 150,000 tonnes per year of spodumene concentrate. Someone's just going to clip us mispronouncing all these words. Potash, spodumene, all this stuff. So just get ready for that. There you go. Um, they have a $3.65 billion market cap. Next one, Ren, Mineral Resources, ticker MIN. Company that has been a darling for a while. Oh, the, look at their chart. Yeah. It is a story of bottom left to top right. Yep. Uh, they So they are involved in lithium, but like... I think mineral resources is known for their iron ore processing more than anything else. So I think that's probably a key call out when it comes to a lot of these companies is that some companies are pure play. They'll just focus on one mine or one mineral, but a lot of them will do a variety of things. Yes. So, you know, mineral resources has lithium exposure, but if the iron ore price goes to zero, uh, they'll probably be processing a lot less of it. And so that side of their business won't do as well. Yeah. But mineral resources, another one. Keep going, Bryce. Pilbara Minerals, uh, well-known company. Pale Pilbara. Pilbara. Let's get some pronunciation. Pilbara. <laughs> Pilbara uh, Minerals. PLS is the ticker. Lithium producer with uh, ambitions of becoming one of the biggest and lowest cost lithium producers in the world. They have a couple of big projects over in Western Australia and they describe them as the largest independent hard rock lithium operation in the world. $8.45 billion market cap. So... Some big ambitions for Pilbara Minerals there. A call out to Pilbara. Why is your ambition to be one of the biggest and lowest cost lithium producers? Raise yeah. your ambitions. Yeah. Try yeah. and be the. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep going. So then we've got uh, Alchem, A-K-E is the ticker. They've got a number of projects uh, across Australia, Japan and Argentina, $8.5 billion market cap. And then to close out, Vulcan Energy Resources. The ticker is VUL. Bit of a bit smaller compared to some of their competitors. One point two billion market cap, but again, they uh, have an ambitious aim to become the world's first zero carbon lithium producer, and uh, they're one of the ASX darlings of the past few years, up over four thousand uh, percent in the past couple of years. So, if you're a shareholder on board the Vulcan journey. Congrats to you. But not again, bad. we've done no research on whether or not this is a good investment at this current point in time. <laughs> <laughs> Past performance is no indication of future. Nickel Wren. Yes. Yeah, so, where are we at with nickel? Uh, nickel Australia has the world's second largest reserves. It's a critical uh, mineral for batteries and a number of other sort of future facing technologies. And there are a number of companies trying to get more nickel out of the ground and into your phone batteries and solar panel batteries <laughs> <laughs> batteries attached to solar panels there's nickel mines creatively named uh ticket nic based in new south wales um they produce nickel pig iron which is used in the manufacture of stainless steel three and a half billion dollar market cap independence group iog they are focused on a nickel copper cobalt project uh in western australia um, they, uh, they've got an $11 billion market cap, uh, so a bigger player there. There's Western areas, a little bit smaller, one and, uh, one and a quarter billion dollar market cap. They have several nickel mining operations across Western Australia, uh, and they are actually in talks to be acquired by Independence Group at the moment. Uh, there's a number of others, Mincor Resources, MCR, Panoramic Resources, PAN, a variety of others, but I think you get the point. Let's move on to co Cobalt. Cobalt, Ren. Um, now, Cobalt, we have the second largest reserves of Cobalt, and it is essential for lithium-ion batteries. So if you're in the lithium game, perhaps consider the Cobalt game as well. Now, I want to start here because I was at the Broken Hill Races uh, a couple of months, oh, like last month, a couple of months ago. As you do. As you do. Um, <laughs> shout out uh, to the Broken Hill Races. I lost all my, well, I didn't lose all my money, but I didn't win any bets. Oh, the truth comes out, <laughs> Mr. Gambling Wren. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but at the races in true Broken Hill style well I, I say true broken hill style first time i've been there um 
There was a big tent uh, that was promoting a new mining project. Cobalt Blue Holdings, ASX ticker COB. Had a good chat to the guys there because they were giving us free drinks. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look, it's um, it's a really interesting story because obviously so much of it is mined in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and they're really working to um, get this mine up and operational and producing. So, um, I guess they can give their people they're supplying the Teslas and the Apples and whoever's creating batteries of the world. Uh, more probably the LGs and the Samsungs, um, who then supply those companies, uh, some choice of suppliers. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of the unis were involved in um, a few different things there. Can't really remember everything they said, but um, interesting story. So nice. anyway, we continue. We continue. So uh, the main call out here for the Cobalt, uh, the Cobalt companies is obviously market caps are a lot smaller than some of the other mineral producers that we've spoken about. So there's Kunico or Kunico, K-N-I is the ticker and they're working on zero carbon cobalt with a market cap of 53 and a half million. Aon Metals, the ticker is AML. They are discover, acquire and develop cobalt resources um, here in Australia, 60 and a half million dollar market cap. Andrea Resources, ARL, uh, have a couple of projects over in Kalgoorlie in Western Australia. Um, and they have a market cap of 326 million. And then to close out, Javoy Mining, JRV, mostly they mine overseas and have a $1.47 billion market cap. So uh, six companies in the cobalt space, if you're interested in uh, checking those out to complement some of your lithium stocks. Uh, manganese, Ren, third largest producer of manganese here manganese? in Australia. Manganese. Man- Ma- manganese. Anyway, uh, so ma- manganese, manganese is essential for steel. Um, uh, I think over 90% of manganese mine is used in producing steel. There's a few companies in Australia, all again, uh, well, two quite small. So Firebird Metals, FRB, 18 million market cap, tiny company. Uh, and then Parenti Global, P-R-N. They have operations across 13 countries. Um, I think maybe more than just manganese. Um, f- half a billion dollar market cap. And then there's a company that we don't speak about a lot, but does a lot. It was spun out of BHP. Mm, a mm. lot of BHP's, I guess, underloved or yep. unwanted assets at the time. South 32, they've got mines in Australia, South Africa, and South America. Is Are they called South 32 because all of the operate? It's like 32 mines south of the equator? Yeah, I think so. Well, let's yeah. go with it because yeah. they're not here to correct us. No. Um, but they've got a $24 billion market cap. They have manganese mines. Uh, so they're another one to look at. But again, you know, what as we were saying with mineral resources a little bit earlier, they have other minerals as well. So if you just believe in the price of manganese going to the moon, um, South 32's benefit will be diluted across the other minerals that they mine. I remember when they listed at about two bucks and they're now four, five, four, five, fourteen. So missed opportunity. Anyway, Should have got in. Um, let's, let's close out, Ren, with uh, graphite. And then um, we can touch and then, on rare earth. And then we can touch on rare earth. So graphite is used in smartphones and conducting electricity. So yeah. pr- pretty important mineral. And look, graphite is not a strength for Australia. Um, but there is one company that captured headlines uh, last week that's worth talking about. Syra, uh, uh, S-Y-R, listed in Australia. But they mine graphite in Mozambique. Um Joe Biden, well, the headline said Joe Biden backs Syra, but that's not Joe a Joe Biden great, purposely backs not, nice. not a great headline <laughs> from the AFR because the US Department of Energy uh, backed Syra. Um, they have given them a 145 Aussie dollar, 145 million Aussie dollar loan uh, to, to secure battery grade graphite for American car makers such as Tesla. So I think uh, it in, it entails them expanding U.S. operations. Uh, I think they've got a plant in Louisiana, um, and so that will allow them, according to the company, the U.S. government loan will enable them to expand further and quadruple production um, at this American plant. So it's an Australian company that mines in Mozambique that has a processing plant in Louisiana. Um, 
Nice. So go Sierra. It's Australian. It's Australian. Listed. Yeah. But yeah. That that's not a mineral we're strong in. So look, I think a lot of these minerals are to sum it up, a lot of these minerals that we've spoken about are key components in batteries. Mm. But batteries are gonna be the drivers of so much because everything is being electrified from the phones that we use to the computers that we're staring at now to the cars that we will eventually drive in. Um, when we can afford a Tesla <laughs> um, battery and to the grid scale batteries that store solar energy and wind energy and um, power everything. That's directionally where the world is heading and Australia just happens to sit on a lot of those critical components. Mm. Key point being that all of these predictions, the World Bank prediction, the IMF prediction, are based on technology as it is now. Mm. There is always the possibility that we find new ways to store electricity and um, we don't need some of these minerals. Yeah. So, yeah. It, really exciting time for Australia's future. That should be the headline. The subheading should be... <laughs> Always watch out for disruption. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ren, let's close out with rare earth minerals. We spoke about it at the top of the show and you've you've mentioned that the minerals we've spoken about are part of the batteries that are driving are going to be driving this this change uh, going forward. But there are a lot of minerals that are involved in other, you know, components, magnets, motors metal alloys, electronic and computing equipment, batteries, you know, everything, medical imaging. And these are minerals that uh, are those rare earth minerals. And I remember speaking to Julia Lee at one point. She was a big fan of Linus. And that is one of Australia's uh, rare earth mineral producers. Their ticker is LYC. They have two major operations, a mining and concentration plant in Western Australia and a refining facility in Malaysia with an $8.5 billion dollar market cap uh, another w i guess well known is uh aluka resources ilu is the ticker and when they have just been lent 1.2 billion from australian government to build a domestic refinery to make the separation of rare earth elements um that is traditionally dominated by chinese suppliers to bring it back on home soil and then to close out uh Arafura Resources, ARU, $604 million market cap. Vita Metals, VML. Vital. Vital. <laughs> I don't know what I read there. Vital Metals, VML, who are aiming to become the lowest cost producer of mixed rare, rare earth oxide outside of China. Um, and they have a market cap of $263 million. And then Northern Minerals, NTU. They're an explorer and they have a market cap of $250 million. So... I love it that a lot of these companies, not just in rare earth, but across all these minerals, are all aspiring to be the world's lowest cost producer yeah. or refiner or whatever it may be. I mean, you um, love the ambition. Love the it ambition. Should, it should be said that you could go to any mining <laughs> and country. They have the same You go ambition. to China, you go to Canada, you go wherever, and they will all be trying to be the lowest cost producer. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the game when you're a commodity. Yeah, yeah. that's literally it. Um, we should say that rare earth Australia isn't as strong. So rare earth is dominated by China. China mm. is the biggest producer. It has the biggest reserves. It has more than double the next largest reserves. And then those next largest reserves are in their neighbor in Vietnam. Um, but then Brazil, then Russia, then India, then Australia. Australia has about a tenth the reserves of China. It is still 4.1 4 million metric tons. Significant. So not small. Get that out of the ground. Um, but yeah, Linus is the one that's spoken about a lot uh, in the Equity Mates community. There's a few others, um, so there's there's some there. And look, we should say that these are only these are the main minerals we've touched on, but there are other ones. Um, but I think this gives a snapshot of what I guess the government, what the mining industry, and what a lot of investors hope, uh, what a lot of investors hope fills the coal-sized hole in yeah. Australia's mining taxation revenue and rev you, you get what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> well, Ren, look, there are a number of companies that are obviously staking their claim to the future by pivoting their businesses to these future minerals that are going to be playing an ever more important part in our transition um, to net zero 
Um, and it is, it's great to see that Australia is in pole position to take advantage of this. And there might be some great investment opportunities that come from this. So a massive thank you to Stake. Invest on Wall Street and the ASX with Stake and head to hellostake.com to find out more about $3 ASX brokerage and everything else that they do. So, Ren, it's been great unpacking the future of Australia's mining industry. Yep. Can't wait to see this all play out. It is currently playing out, but um, it's, it it's only going to get bigger, you would imagine, unless there's disruption and all those other caveats that we've got to put on it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. And, and like the, the, the biggest caveat is the mining industry doesn't change. Like yeah, the yeah. mining industry is still full of explorers that are trying, that are getting land, like rights to land and trying to find deposits, and many of them don't. Yes, that's it. And that doesn't change if you're searching for lithium or coal. That's it. Um, so the industry is the industry. You got to know what you're investing in. Is it an explorer? Is it uh, someone that's developing a mine, or is it a major? Um, where are they in the production process? How much have they found? How easy is it to get that those deposits? How much will it cost to extract those deposits? All of those questions, are still the questions. But what is exciting is that. Australia will be digging things up from the ground for generations to come. <laughs> That's it. So stick around. We've got our third and final episode in uh, the Future Industries of Australia series coming up next week as we discuss advanced manufacturing, one that I'm really looking forward to. So much going on in that space. 3D printing, robotics, automation, you name it. It's all happening and uh, we are right in the thick of it. So uh, we're going to pick that up next week. All thanks to Stake. Ren, it's a pleasure as always. We'll chat next week. Sounds good. I will say this about investing. Everything you do learn is cumulative. What I learned at 20 is useful.